Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm kind of like scatterbrained today. So we have a mean of uh, uh, twenty three point three inches. We have standard deviation of one point two inches. So this is just from the beginning. Um, they, instead of using a P of 0 0.05, um, they don't want you to, use, they basically want to use 0 0.01 on both ends. Um, <clears throat> so we had to find essentially um, what they want. So we need to find the critical Z score for 0.01. So the two ways you can do that, one is a book, which I can look it up to make sure. And you just go to 0.01. I just would go and look from this, this in the, the sheet, which would be negative 2.3-ish. So 2.33-ish is what I should be looking at. We could also do equals, so I could put the value I'm looking for here, equals norm.env. So I can look at the probability, the mean, and the standard deviation. It would tell me my value based off of that. So we do norm dot m of the probability 99 percent the mean and the standard deviation so uh instead of having to do if we were to do it this way we would have to uh calculate the score and then you would solve uh x minus 23.3 divided by one point two is equal to uh, plus and minus twenty three point or two point three three, which would give you those two values. That's what you would do if you were going to calculate them by hand. This is what you would do if you would calculate them based on our values. And let me double check to make sure those are right. And so we would have uh, one decimal place. You can round these as well, by the way. If you just do equals round comma one, it will round to one digit, which you could use whenever you're doing your homework because it wants you to round to a specific amount. And if you just tell the computer to do it, you don't have to worry about making a mistake. <clears throat> so anything between this value and this value would not be significantly high. So on the next one for me, it says gives a value of 25.5. So that, because it lies within that range, would not be significantly high because it's actually inside the range that are not considered significant, which is what we're kind of looking at. So so what we've done is called finding, um, this is, the uh, confidence interval. So what we want to do is make sure that every or all of our values would be between those two parts. Uh, so we're sure. Yes, you can use the master template. I'm just doing it this way, but the master template will should have the same formulas within it. Um, 
So we're sure 99% that our mean is within those two points. Anything that falls outside of that will be significantly different based on that significance level. The second question asked was 49, <coughs> which is an MP and Q question. I think I did it last time, but that's okay. See where it is in the textbook because, yeah. Um, I want to make sure I have this one correct because it's annoying. Two eighty four. So this is 31. The next one we're going to do is 49. So on this, we have to find mean and standard deviation. So we have a formula for mean given n and p so mean is n p so n p so we have this n p so value formula So the known things we'll have is N, P, and Q, and X. Those are everything we may or may not have for distribution. Um, so we have an N of 14. We have a P of 0.5. That's the probability of that occurring. Q is always going to be 1 minus my P value. Uh, and x, so this is the number. This is the probability of success, probability of failure, if I could spell, and this is the number of successes. And that comes from later. So our mean is going to be equal to our n times p so equals this. Standard deviation is the square root of n p q. So I take equals square root n times p times P times Q. Should not be zero. F one, not 19. There we go, 1.87. So a uh, couple other things we have to do is they wanna know if NP and NQ are less greater than five or not. So we had to see what NP is. Uh, we NP, by the way, is right here, your mean. So we're gonna have NP. We're gonna have that value right there. So we have we're going to have to find the probability that there are fewer than six values. So we have a mean, we have a standard deviation, and we'll have an X. We'll have that X of six. So we'll be able to, on the normal distribution, find the probability of less than six. So um, probability. So it should be norm.dist. I don't know. Yes, we have norm.dist, which we have 
quoi, il ne devrait normalement. Oh, because you can use a normal distribution to approximate a binomial. So you can use norm.dist, just making sure our x value, our mean, our standard deviation, and cumulative. So this is equal to this. So we have 30% chance that it's going to be less than that because this is our probability. And we're going to round to four places, apparently. So round final four. So 0 0.2695, 2965. Apparently not. I have no idea why they give me the wrong answer. Let me double check. Sorry, I'm double checking. So we're going to do it the, the old fashioned way. So we have our Z is equal to X minus mu divided by standard deviation. So we have six minus seven why are we using sorry, I'm making sure oh less than i am sorry because we're using that binomial distribution we're not going to be doing six here but it should be 5.5 so as weird as it sounds we want to use the value just slightly less by a half a point than what we're looking at okay that's what it is <clears throat> So when we're doing a binomial using normal distribution, uh, choose a value 0 0.5 away based on question from what you're doing. So because they wanted to have fewer than five, I needed to check for 5.5, or sorry, fewer than six, I needed to choose 5.5. So when I looked at that 5.5 and then I put it in here, I was able to get 21.13%. Uh, and if I would have done it this as well, I, I could do the Z score. So we have 5.5 minus seven, divided by 1.87 gives me negative 8.17. And then a probability from that. Um, uh, no, there's a way you can get it. Uh, but we're just looking it up on the table, negative 8.80178. Eight, so eight, negative eight is 2119. So on here, your difference is literally 0. 0.00006 difference if you look it up from here. And this is there, the, the, the difference is in here, I'm going off of a calculated Z score. On here, I'm going off a table that only goes to two decimal places. So rounding error.
Um, so that's those two questions. I think there's, yeah. Is there any other questions that I can go over? Has anyone started the review yet? Or does anyone have any other questions they want to ask? Pause until we get the question. Uh, is there a specific question on Poisson distribution or no? Or just in general what it is? Poisson probability fifteen. So the idea of a Poisson distribution is an event where you have a lot of the same kind of answers. Um, so the definition is a discrete probability distribution that applies to occurrences of the same event over a specific interval. Um, so I got this explained to me uh, in my grad school uh, as the idea of if uh, this works really great. Um, if you do a lot of epidemiology, if you do a lot of diseases, um, in the general population, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing because it's kind of weird. Uh, in a general population, the normal thing is for a disease to not occur. Um, it is normal for this to occur. It's normal for people to, for instance, to not get Lyme disease or not to get uh, croup jacobson disease. You know, those are not normal events. So when you're doing all these things, it is normal to, for when you take a test to get a negative result. It's not very helpful when you're looking at statistics, but it's normal. Uh, so a Poisson distribution is a distribution that describes the normality of an event that happens a lot and tends to trail out. Uh, so the idea is you're looking at an event at some interval. So that's, a, that's an important thing. So for instance, if you're looking at, like my professor did a lot of bug studies. He was a, he's a, um, a bug scientist. So he would go out and get traps <clears throat> and most of the traps were empty. So over a specific set of time, um, he would set the traps they would be random the traps were nowhere near each other and we must have the occurrences for the events be uniform across them so the idea is essentially that we end up getting a distribution that looks like share screen whiteboard so you get something like this. You have a lot of events that happen right in here and very few that happen here. Not that these aren't important, but these are what kind of like skewers all the things that you're seeing. <clears throat> um, whenever I did, I did studies on uh, soy, sudden death syndrome in soybeans. This was very common. We would get a lot of diseases that are plants that just got none to very little and then a lot that got a lot of symptoms or you get a lot of them that got a lot of symptoms so another another way it can happen is you could have something like this and this is also kind of a Poisson distribution you got a lot that got like say this is severity five we've run it on a thing of like one to six so you have a lot here, but not a lot here. And the thing about it is whenever you run these kind of studies, it's not this that tends to be interesting. It's these guys over here. I, you can't even see it because I just realized I'm not spotlighting. So it's not 
these guys over here. It's not the, the, the hill that's interesting. It's the little bit over here. These tend to be the interesting things or interesting, not necessarily good, not, not necessarily bad, but the things that you want to study. And you're about to see my cat as she comes up. Hi, Luna. Welcome to online classes. Um, so that's what a Poisson distribution is. You tend to have a lot of events that occur in a specific range. And then outside of that, you'll have a diminished return type of thing. Uh, this uses something called Euler's number, uh, which is E, which is roughly equal to 2.71828. Um, okay, Luna, you're being annoying. So this is kind of the number that sets things off. Um, the actual formula, if you care, I don't care if you care or not. I don't know if it's going to be on a test. Uh, the Poisson distribution is equal to the mean, the mu x times Euler's number to the negative mean, and all that's over x factorial. So it's a weird distribution. I'm not going to have you do anything with it. It's just that is what it is. And I have to move my screen because I have a cat. So that's what it is. Like I said, I don't think you have to do anything in it. And if you do, bug me and we can go over it a little bit more in detail. <clears throat> So what other questions do you have? 